Okay, so you're, you're going to talk. <laughs> I'm going to talk. Okay, perfect. So this is Mira's lab then. Well, well, welcome. Uh, and today we're going to talk about HTTP3. Why should we all care? You're going to tell us, I, right? Yeah, I hope. I, I will try to still tell my best. <laughs> so hi, everybody. Welcome. And I hope that you are curious about HTTP3. And I wish you to enjoy this talk. This is like an exceptional opportunity for me to speak at EuroPython. Uh, as I told, I'm Miloslav Weyman and I, I'm streaming from Prague. I work here for Akamai Technologies in the protocol optimization team. If you don't know that, Akamai runs one of the largest CDNs in the world with more than a quarter million servers around the globe. And our peak traffic is more than 150 terabits per second. The reason why I'm speaking here today about HTTP3 is that our protocol optimization team enabled Quick for this whole Akamai network. If you are wondering how Quick is related to HTTP3, then you are watching the right video because I will explain you what Quick and what HTTP3 are in next approximately 40 minutes. I assume that you have at least a rough idea what happens under the hood when, when you visit your favorite internet website. But don't be afraid if you are not an expert in network protocols. This is an introductory talk, so I will start with a quick recap to make everything clear. So, when you visit a website, a browser issues HTTP requests. And HTTP is a simple text protocol. You can speak HTTP yourself even without a web browser. You open a TCP connection, for example, using Telnet or Netcat, and write your request. Hit the return key twice, and the server should set a response back. That's all. It's that simple. And I'm pretty sure that most of you know this, that most of you know this protocol because it's here from the 1997. And most websites still use this protocol from the 90s. The difference from the 90s is that most traffic today is encrypted. Encrypted using HTTPS. HTTPS means uh, HTTP over TLS. An HTTPS connection is encrypted using TLS. That's the difference. But besides that, nothing changes. Once I open a TLS connection, for example, using OpenSSL, I can write my HTTP request as just I did before. If you want something more sophisticated, we should move to 2015, when HTTP2 was published. Unlike the first version, HTTP2 is a binary protocol. So I want to show you an example here. HTTP2 has many nice properties. Uh, probably the most important one is that it supports multiplexing. It allows you to download multiple objects at parallel over a single connection. To see why this is useful, let's look at an example how a web page is losing, loaded using HTTP 1. Uh, with HTTP 1, uh, to browsers typically open multiple connections per server to allow at least some parallelism. In most cases, browsers open six connections per server, uh, per, per domain. And so let's look at this slide. First, an HTML page is loaded. But that's not all. Like typical page today consists of hundreds of objects images, JavaScript, styles, fonts, uh, advertisement, tracking codes, whatever. So you have to load much more. So browsers open another five connections and download six objects at parallel. The 
yellow and red lines show measure the time necessary for a connection setup. Further requests have to wait until the one of connections is available, until one of previous connections finish, and so on. Further requests are queued for even longer. In the diagram, the green bars are waiting times, a latency, a time between a server sends a request and gets a response. And as you see in this example, these green bars and the waiting before can be much longer than the very tiny blue bars at the end, which measure actual download times. The described issue is called HTTP head of line blocking. The issue is that HTTP requests are blocked until one of six connections is available. To minimize consequences of head of line blocking, uh, we invented JavaScript bundles or image sprites. The idea is simple. If you download fewer objects, you issue fewer requests, and uh, you spend less time waiting. But you can imagine that it may not be the best idea to download everything in one blob. Probably because you will be downloading much more than you need. With HTTP2, browsers open multiple connections per domain, uh, open one connection per domain only. And then they use it to download all objects concurrently. The blue download times can be longer because the connection is shared, but avoiding the unnecessary waiting is a game changer. Today, most top sites use HTTP2. I would say that when performance matter, HTTP2 should be used. Obviously, you should measure what works in your specific use case, but this is my generic recommendation. Because with HTTP1, you can be limited by latency, by the distance to the server. With HTTP2, this limitation is suppressed, allowing you to utilize most of available bandwidth. So, we have two important HTTP versions. We have HTTP 1, which is more than 20 years old, and still good enough for most sites. And we have HTTP 2, which was standardized only five years ago, and which is still good enough, which is, which is much better in performance than the previous version. In this situation, it's fair to ask why we need a new protocol today, why we need a new HTTP version. What can HTTP3 offer us? The answer is that HTTP3 is completely different. It replaces foundations of the internet. That's a brave statement. What are the internet foundations? How does the internet work? Uh, not an easy answer. The internet is a complicated beast. But the good news is that we mostly don't care because all the complexity is hidden from us by something called TCP. TCP is like a magic box. You write something to the box, and on the other side of the internet, somebody can read it from their box. If something gets lost on the way, TCP retransmits it. If something is delayed, TCP reorders it. The TCP layer handles various network glitches for you, so you get a reliable byte stream and you don't have to care how it is implemented. You can write anything to, to, to a TCP socket. In this talk, we care mainly about HTTP3, but TCP can transport anything. It can be FTP, it can be your emails over POP3 or SMTP, like, and, and hundreds of other protocols. 
This TCP protocol is older than HTTP. It's here from the 80s with the early implementations from the, 90, uh, from the 70s. And we use it since then. TCP is implemented in your operating systems. Thanks to that, we can use TCP from almost any programming language, including Python. And we can do that with few lines of code only. You know, if you are used to high level APIs, then uh, the TCP sockets may look complicated to you, old fashioned. But if you consider that these few lines of code get your data over the internet and how all this API is, I think it's pretty amazing. I have already told you that HTTPS is HTTP over TLS. And TLS is just another box that sits on top of TCP. It encrypts everything that goes in and decrypts everything that goes out. TLS prevents eavesdropping or data tampering. That means that nobody can read or change your payload. And similar to TCP, TLS is also protocol independent. So we can write HTTP to it. We get HTTPS. But for example, FTT, FTPS is uh, FTP over TLS over TCP. And now, what would be our options if somebody denied us from using TCP? TCP has a younger and less clever brother called UDP. UDP is primitive compared to TCP. With UDP, you send your packets and they may arrive or may not. And if they arrive, they can appear in any order. It means that your app has to handle any network glitch. Typical UDP use cases include DNS, uh, online gaming, or real-time streaming. So if we had no TCP, we would probably have to use UDP. There are other protocols, there are many other protocols, but in practice, only TCP and UDP are supported uh, over the internet by the devices in the wild. So if I had to use UDP and I wanted something reliable like TCP, then maybe I would try to build something like TCP on top of UDP, you know, some kind of abstraction to reuse my code between applications. Huh. And, hmm. and may you know, maybe that may not be the worst idea. Maybe, maybe the thing that we built on top of UDP can be actually better than the original TCP. Say hello to Quick. Quick is a new transport protocol designed in Google. It emulates and improves TCP on top of UDP. Quick, Quick is TCP redesigned and rewritten from scratch. Quick has to implement everything normally provided to you by kernel of your operating system. It has to implement it in your apps in user space. And similar to TCP, Quick retransmits and reorders packets so you get a reliable byte stream and you don't have to care how it is implemented. The difference from uh, TCP is that Quick has TLS built in. Everything delivered using Quick is encrypted by default. Uh, and when we compare this to TCP, Quick can be also used to deliver any message, including HTTP. 
at least in theory or in the future. In practice today, we use Quick almost exclusively with HTTP. But in this talk, we care HTTP. We care about HTTP3. And this gets me to HTTP3. HTTP3 is HTTP over Quick. HTTP version 3 is similar to HTTP version 2, but it is delivered using Quick, using UDP instead of TCP. That's what makes HTTP3 so interesting. It uses a completely different transport protocol under the hood than we used since the 90s. But one does not rewrite like TCP layer just for fun. The new layer should like give us some advantages. So what they are. The main advantage of Quick is that it's multiplexed. It supports many independent streams, many independent logical flows within a single connection. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. Did you listen to me? Didn't I told you that the multiplexing is the main advantage of HTTP2? I did. But let me explain the difference. HTTP2 is multiplexed, but the underlying uh, TCP is not. So when you are transferring multiple objects, multiple requests in parallel over HTTP2, HTTP2 has to serialize them into a single TCP stream. And that single TCP stream is guaranteed to deliver in order. And now imagine what happens when one packet is lost. Everything is blocked. Everything has to wait for that one packet. One lost packet completely stops everything. Your operating system can have the request you can have uh, the object you need in its buffer, but it won't give it to you because the TCP layer promised to return everything in order. This is called TCP head of line blocking. So with HTTP2, we got rid of HTTP head of line blocking, but we got the TCP head of line blocking instead. Slightly better, but not much. Quick, unlike TCP, supports independent streams. It knows uh, what, what objects are in what stream. Thanks to that, when one packet is lost, only objects delivered in that packet are blocked. Others can continue. This can improve performance and user experience on lossy connections. Another important quick advantage is that it offers a faster connection setup. I probably don't have time to go into much details here, but the problem with TCP is that it has too many layers. So you need one round trip to set up a TCP con connection. Then you need at least one round trip to set up some encryption context to set up your TLS. So first useful data can be delivered in the third round trip at best. With Quick, you have one layer less. The Quick handshake and uh, TLS handshake can happen at the same time shortening the connection setup. But we can make this even faster, even better. Quick also supports so-called zero RTT. With the zero RTT handshake, we can include useful data with the handshake. So there is no extra round trip that you have to wait for. This is possible when a client knows some secret from before. So this is available for reconnections to servers that you spoke to before. 
I have to warn you that there is one danger with uh, with the zero RTT, and it's 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 the security issue that it allows like replay attacks. For that reason, you should enable it only for hidden potent requests only for requests that can be replayed without any side effects. If I have to be fair to TCP, I have to mention that there is a TCP extension called TCP Fast Open that should enable something like zero RTT in TCP. But it does not work very well in the practice. I, I will explain it in a, in a minute while, why. Another quick advantage, an interesting one, is that Quick supports connection migration. Unlike TCP, Quick does not identify connections using an IP address and port number. But it instead, it uses a unique connection ID sent inside the connection. Thanks to that, it's possible to switch your connections. For example, you disconnect from Wi-Fi and, and get to, to some mobile signal and your connections, your requests sh should be able to continue without any interruption. I already mentioned that Quick is always encrypted. What's important here is that Quick encrypts not only your message, but also traffic, con uh, also metadata, traffic control, headers. Because with TLS over TCP, your message is encrypted, but the things around that, like the headers, the metadata are not. And this increased encryption is important for your privacy, obviously, but not only for that. It is also important for future development of the technology, for future development of Quick. Because there is a problem with internet. And the problem is that there are many devices, many boxes that try to help you. There are boxes thing that they understand to the protocols that you are using. So they somehow interfere with it. And they claim that it's in your best interest. But as these boxes get old, under, their, their understanding gets worse. And at some point, they are likely to cause more harm than help. Take uh, an HTTP2, for example. The old boxes can assume that any TCP on port 80 is HTTP1, because it was always like that. So with this assumption, the boxes can break any HTTP2 traffic there. And that's the reason why we use HTTP2 over TLS only. We use encrypted HTTP2 only. Because when something is encrypted, middle boxes don't see it. So TLS can hide HTTP from the middle boxes. But the problem remains because the boxes still see the TCP layer. I mentioned TCP fast open. The thing that's something like zero RTT in, in click. It, it was never widely adopted because there are many boxes which that consider traffic with this extension invalid and they can, they can drop this traffic. So TCP fast open will can can become like TCP slow open. By encrypting everything in quick, including traffic control, including metadata, including headers, we refuse any help from the middle boxes. Thanks to that, the quick protocol can evolve in future. We say that quick avoids ossification. There are other advantages. An interesting one is that 
Quick offers much faster development because it's implemented in user space, it's implemented in apps. You can upgrade Quick with any software upgrade. You get a new browser version and you can get a new Quick version. Uh, Quick also offers better options for congestion control or loss recovery. That's a very interesting problem. My protocol optimization team spends a lot of time on that. The idea is that you want to send data fast enough to utilize your bandwidth, but not too fast to cause packet loss. But no technology comes with advantages only. So there are challenges for a quick tool. From my point of view, the main problem with Quick is that it's new. So for example, internet providers may not expect regular traffic over UDP and they can rate limit it or even block it. And because Quick is not implemented in, in, in operating systems, apps have to provide their own implementations. And if we compare like random implementations with the TCP stack optimized since the 80s, like quality of Quick can be questionable. And probably the most discussed challenge is the CPU usage. There's definitely an area where future development and optimizations can help. But let's move from theory to practice. What you can try today, what's the current state of HTTP3? I hope that you are curious, but before I get to that, I have to clarify one important distinction. Distinction between two Quick implementations. We have Google Quick and IETF Quick. Google Quick or G Quick is a proprietary open source. Is that possible? It's, it's open source available in Chromium, but developed by one company by Google. It's not standardized and it can change with uh, like any, any, any Chromium or any Chrome version. On the other hand, IETF Quick uh, or Quick with no prefix is the upcoming standard. And IETF working group is finalizing it so we will hopefully have an official version soon. These two versions are not compatible and support for them differs. That means that when we discuss support, we have to mention support for what of these two versions. Let's start with GQuick. It's quite likely that you are already using Google Quick today. When a Chrome browser connects to a Google server, it will very often use Quick. It will use Quick in most cases. And Chrome is a quite common client and Google services are also popular. So significant portion of traffic today is already over Quick. Uh, in Akamai, we enabled GQuick for all media customers. That's a lot of traffic too. But besides that, I'm not aware of any other large scale deployments besides Akamai and Google. I heard some rumors about like closed internal deployments, even large scales, but nothing officially available, nothing, nothing public. But strictly speaking, GQuick is not HTTP free. And this talk is about HTTP free. HTTP free is HTTP over IETF Quick. It's the upcoming standard. And we can expect support for, for HTTP free for, for the IETF Quick in all major browsers. Chrome Canary and Firefox Nightly support ITF Quick for some time already. And Apple announced uh, support for it in uh, 
like in, in their next operating systems. So I, I believe that we will get to like official support in all browsers soon. Speaking about clients, special mention belongs to Curl, which has an experimental support for HTTP3. The reason is that Curl is not only a command line tool, but it's also a C library, a very popular C library. So if, uh, yeah, uh, so if, for example, your car will speak HTTP free in future, it will be most likely thanks to lib libcurl. If you want to learn more about HTTP free, then my first recommendation would be talks from Daniel Sternberg, the author of Curl. On the server side, you can notice that CDNs, content delivery networks, do not want to this do not want to miss this opportunity. CDNs are investing into quick and HTTP free. So if you are using their service, you may get HTTP free without an extra effort. If you prefer a do-it-yourself approach, you may like that HTTP free support for Nginx is in progress. The code is developed in a separate quick branch. So like the support is not stable yet, but I believe that they will get there. Just be aware that like enabling HTTP3 is just the first step. I know something about it because our team is spending last few years by, by looking for the best quick configuration. We did a lot of optimizations, but we are still not done. If you want to see other HTTP free implementations, visit the GitHub profile of the ITA working group. There is not only the list of implementations, but also a compatibility table, which shows you what client works with what server. It's pretty green these days, so the future is green. If you want to try HTTP for yourself, I recommend to download Firefox Nightly. You can enable HTTP free in its configuration in the, in the about config page, and you can visit one of the test pages. Nginx uh, has a nice test page, Akamai offers one, and others can be found at the, at the IT working group. So we have two versions. What version to choose today, Google Quick or IETF Quick? You know the answer. If you want to develop anything today, go for the standard IETF version. Its support is experimental only today, but this should get much better soon. Akamai supports Quick since 2016. We deployed the proprietary version back then, and we are updating it since that. And because this was the only way how to offer quick advantages to our customers, to our users. And it's still the only way today. But in practice, Google is like backporting changes from the ITF quick to, to their version. So it's quite likely that both versions will converge in future. This is very similar how HTTP2 was born. There was a proprietary protocol called Speedy. It was developed in Google. Then ITF took it, standardized it as HTTP2. Today, everybody uses HTTP2 and nobody cares about Speedy. If you want to see whether a support supports HTTP3 or Quick, look for an Alt SVC header. The Alt SVC header is sent by servers to inform clients that they can switch to HTTP3. This mechanism is different than switching from HTTP1 than HTTP2. The reason is that for deciding between HTTP1 and HTTP2, you can open a TCP connection and then negotiate like what version to use. With Quick, you have to open a separate Quick connection 
and you have to know like where you can connect and whether you can connect. By the way, this Alt SVC header can be quite useful for my job, for, for protocol optimization. Because all Akamai servers support Squick today, but we send this Alt SVC header only when we believe that our clients will benefit from it. Python. This is a Python conference. If you want to try HTTP free in Python, go for the IEO Quick library. It's the only Python library mentioned at the ITF Quick Working Group Wiki. I tried it and it works nice. Yes, I tried it. That's all. I write Python a lot, but my code does not use HTTP free yet. Sorry. Why? Let's ignore the fact that Google Quick is available in Chromium only and uh, deployments of ITF Quick are experimental at best. Let's discuss how can I use HTTP3 once it is standardized, once it is widely deployed. Because I'm afraid that to use HTTP3, I will have to change how I write my code. I told you, I told you that the main advantage of Quick is multiplexing is that you can issue multiple requests in parallel. To use that, I need some kind of async programming, probably async IO in Python. Another issue with, uh, another issue with uh, HTTP3 is like the alt SVC header. Your client has to remember uh, what's a, what, 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 what servers send this header so what support so what servers support quick so your clients will need some kind of storage and the storage will be needed for zero rtt2 because you have to remember secrets between sessions but before speaking about migration to http3 i should probably talk about http2 first because i guess that most of you do not even use http2 in python yet the most common Python library for issuing HTTP requests is URL free. You probably use it because it's a dependency of popular libraries like pip or request, and it does not support HTTP2 yet. If I had to choose library for HTTP2, I would use HTTPX. It has a nice API and it supports async, async invocation. So if I have to use HTTP3, I would like to have something like HTTPX a library that has a nice API, it supports all the protocol and it's asynchronous. And I want a library that chooses the best HTTP version for me. When I write Python, I don't want to care about HTTP versions. Until I have that, I will probably use HTTP one from the nineties. Let's summarize what I have presented to you. We have a new transport protocol called Quick. It's a TCP replacement on top of UDP. HTTP3 is similar to HTTP2, but built on top of Quick on top of UDP instead of TCP. For practical usage, I want to be issue HTTP requests without caring about HTTP versions, similar to browsers. When I use my browser, I don't care what HTTP version it uses. I like a view that HTTP is only one and the versions are just mappings to different transport layers. So HTTP one and HTTP two map this one HTTP to TCP and HTTP three maps this protocol to UDP. Should you care? I think you should be at least aware that something important and interesting is happening. All the black big players are involved with that. The change is quite low level, so it may not affect you directly. But if you are programming for the web, then you should at least keep an eye on it. 
If you want to learn more, I already recommended talks from Daniel Stenbergs. If you want more details or more critical view, look for talks from Robin Marks. Obviously, I should not forget about like the IETF Quick Working Group. And even more links are uh, at my personal homepage with, with these slides. And you, you, you will find the link in the, in, in the schedule or like in the chat. And that's all from my side. Thank you, thank you very much for, for listening to me. Thank you, thank you. I, 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 will, I will play the play applauses and I will remember to tune me back later. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, thank you, that was a really nice, really interesting talk. So we have time for maybe one or two questions, not a lot. So I will pick one. Um, Mansour is asking if He's saying Quick is adding another layer of encryption below TLS. I think that's also a question. It's and not. It's, it, and sorry, and, and if I also asking if he's adding a performance uh, delay or more, or if adding more delay because performance. Uh, like Quick is not uh, adding another layer. Like it, like you can use HTTP without without TLS. So compared to plain HTTP, it's adding another layer. But if you use, if you compare it to HTTPS. It's, it, it uses the same layer, it's just like integrated to the protocol itself. So you have to use this encryption. Speaking about performance, like quick is faster, like not, like not obviously in all cases, but in most cases, and that's the primary reason why we use quick to make the internet faster. So again, like you should measure what works in your case, you should optimize it, but like the goal of Kick is to make, make the internet faster to 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 faster connections. Okay, and last one is uh, Philip is saying I find HTTP two is in common in Python code base, for example, in load balancer for uh, like nginx, uh, or when. Uh, so he's asking if it, do you think that the same will happen with HTTP three, so that this is not so popular or not so wide use. I think. There are like libraries for HTTP two. There, there are like there will definitely be libraries for HTTP three. Me personally, like I would recommend for most use cases, like write your apps as you do so far, like for speaking at the server side and let the server handle that. That means that you, you, you it's very likely that you have, for example, nginx as a proxy in front of your app, and that nginx should probably speak HTTP three. I, I, I probably don't want to write HTTP three server in Python not for a production use case. It can be nice learning tool, but for a production, I would use like either some production server or, 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 or a CDN. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for presenting you. NeuroPython. And if anyone wants to continue the discussion or to ask more questions, there is a channel in Discord, talk HTTP3. You can go and find a Miroslav there. Yeah, I will be there. Thanks. Okay.